Well, good morning and welcome. Happy New Year to you. If I haven't seen you, to wish you a Happy New Year. Um, lovely to see you all. And we are sort of still in the Christmassy mood because today we celebrate Epiphany and our three Magi and the ginormous and extremely heavy camel have all arrived at the stable. Um, don't ever try and lift the camel unaided, it's really heavy. Um, but it's great to think about that journey of the Magi and we're also thinking about our vision as a church and the idea of bright light. We've still got all our Christmas lights up. If you're watching online, you'll be able to see a little bit of that. We've still got our tree up, we've got our candles lit. So we're thinking about being a bright light as we think about the journey of the Magi. And Mark's going to be speaking to us a little bit later about that idea of our light shining. So why don't we stand? If you're able to stand, please do. And I'll just pray and then we'll sing our first two sing songs. Lord Jesus, thank you that your light shines in our hearts in this world. Lord, thank you that you bring light into the darkness of our worries, into the darkness of our fears, into the darkness of this world. Your light shines. And so we pray that you will be in our hearts and our minds now, that we will worship you in spirit and in truth, and that we'll meet with you over this time together. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Be faithful forevermore. You 
yes, the journey of the Magi, but that idea of kind of revelation and God's message going bigger and further and wider, um, which is represented in that journey that the Magi took. They were not part of Israel, they were not part of what traditionally had been God's chosen people, but they follow the star and they come to find the infant Jesus and they worship. <coughs> so we're just going to watch a little video that reminds us of that story. Um, it's quite young oriented, so we'll be young at heart as we watch, um, and it just reminds us of the story. The story of Christmas. Jesus and the wise men. This is Jesus. Jesus is the son of God who would grow up to do amazing things. His parents on earth were Mary Hi. and Joseph. Hey Jesus was born in a barn because there was no room for him anywhere else in Bethlehem. Bethlehem was part of Judea, an area that was ruled by a king named Herod. King Herod was in Jerusalem when some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, Excuse me. Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose and we have come to worship him. When Herod heard that there was another king born in Judea, he was very upset. Ah. As was everyone else in Jerusalem. Yeah. Not you. So Herod called all the important priests and Jews together and asked them where this king was supposed to be born. The Jews knew that their king would eventually come and was always told to them that the king of the Jews, the savior of the world, would be born in Bethlehem. So they told that to King Herod. Then King Herod thought of a way to trick the wise men. Aha. So he called a private meeting with them and learned from them when the king of the Jews star first appeared. Oh God! And then King Herod told the wise men, go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child. And when you find him, come back and tell me so that I can go and worship him too. Eh, okay. Hey, on your way. But secretly, Herod wanted to know where the king of the Jews was so he could get rid of him. So the wise men went on their way, and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where Jesus was, and the wise men were filled with joy. Woohoo! They went into the house and saw Mary and Jesus. Hello! Oh, look! Wow! And they bowed down and worshipped Jesus. Wait! They gave him special gifts fit for the king that he was, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then God warned them in a dream to not go home through Jerusalem, where King Herod was, but God told them to go home a different way. So they did. And then an angel appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up! The angel told Joseph to go to Egypt with Mary and Jesus because Herod was looking to kill Jesus. That very night. Of course, the last bit of it, but that gives us just a reminder of the story, and we're very, very familiar with it. Uh, Mark's going to introduce our theme a little bit, and yes. then we'll have our Bible reading. Yeah, I'm just looking at quite a quite an intelligent, observant lot. I don't know if you were listening mm -hmm. to the video. Mm -hmm. So the wise men were guided by oh. and. Something else guided them. A star and... What did that made them think which way to go? Yeah, actually it's in the Bible rather than the oh. cartoon. Yeah, what made them not go back to Herod? Oh, a dream. A dream, yeah, they were guided by stars and dreams. So, anyway, it amazed me, they get to Beth, uh, get to uh, Jerusalem, and, um, and they say, have you seen what's up there? And suddenly they all looked around and they saw the stars. And all, all Herod was, was like worried, and all Jerusalem apparently was a bit. Notice that. But I wonder if you noticed anything this morning uh, which isn't quite right. Rain. <laughs> <laughs> but it is, it is meant to be cold and rainy in winter, right? Climate change. <laughs> it's on, but it's not quite that bad this morning. Something in the room, something in the room, we might have noticed, is not quite normally there. 
Well, perhaps she will be there, out of place. You're not really observant, are you? <laughs> <laughs> so they were? In the crib scene. Sorry. Uh, uh, when Major No for a bed. It's not a crib, it's a stable. <laughs> that was Major. I, I, Grandma <laughs> disagrees. <laughs> I want to the crib. Yes, something we have are, are you know, this, this stable scene could be everything. It's got animals, it's got people from the east, it's got angel bear, it's got shepherds, and it's got colour TV. <laughs> Just what you need when you're a bit bored and you're trying to look after the baby. What is this? I wonder what is the youngest person in the room uh, who knows what this is. Does anyone, anyone want to tell me what this is? Oh, you're incredibly young, right? It's a slave. I have that. Oh, right. So this here is a nice slide, which you can see is. Can you see your ears? Yeah. Watch you learn, teenagers. Me. Right. So I think we need to engage some teenagers to see if they can make this work. Oh. Who wants to volunteer? Oh, really? <laughs> oh, you're meant to know text. So come on, you try and make that work. And when it's working, you can come up and annoy me perhaps later on in my talk. But it is. A slide viewer. A slide will be Facebook. I think I broke it. <laughs> you just, just keep at it. Come on, persevere, young man. I thought I broke it. Persevere, you can break it. It's all right, it's not precious. The slide is. But, um, oh, he really has broken it now. <laughs> Any idea? I tell you what, you can ask an adult to help you with a pair of scissors and stick it up that thing. Uh, maybe. My talk later, this is a pre talk. We will find out what it does. Okay, but until then, crack the sound. Well, that's as easy as doing the right thing. The reading is from Matthew 5, verses 14 to 16. You are the light of the world. A tavern built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they might may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. That's the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> That's good. How's the technical department doing? <laughs> Guess what? Oh, you, there's got to be a way. When you get there, and have that epiphany, light bulb moment, can bring it up. It might be a while. Um, <coughs> so the wise men, I think, were searchers. They're people who were looking and trying to think, what? Is this, is this a star? Oh, I had a dream. Was that too much cheese? <laughs> and you have too much cheese. I don't know. But, um, no, you can't. <laughs> Uh, and, and but they found something. So I wonder, is God hiding? Is that God's intention to be hiding from us? Is God hiding? So Matthew 5, which was read so well, I'm going to repeat it though. Um, so, little Bible quiz here. Who's the light of the world? Jesus! Is that right? Jesus said, I am the light of the world, but not in our passage. Who's the light of the world? We are. We are. Jesus said to him, you are the light of the world. Jesus wanted us to be visible. Not him. So if you are light, you don't put yourself under a bushel. You don't build yourself in a little dark valley. You put yourself up on a hill. That's a lovely bit of Santorini from our holiday, which we were blessed to have. And um, everyone can see it. You can see it from miles around. And has a technical department. <laughs> Not good. <laughs> you might need some more gaffer tape or hammer or something. Just, just keep at it. Keep at it. We'll get there. We'll get that. At least I know one person. I think I got it. You there? I think so. Right, now what do we do? I have no idea. 
I'll, I'll stop around you around to help. Anyway, um, an old person like me might be able to help you. And uh, so the first thing is that we as a church, I believe, are called to be visible. Visible. We're not called to hide away. We're called to be visible. But I want us to explore what it means to be light. And I think sometimes we think, be light, it's a bit like those um, posters on stations where it says, you know, I'm the light of the world, the wages of sin is death, or, or some bit of scripture. I don't have a problem with people knowing bits of scripture. That's, that's a good thing. But I think being light is more about more than bigger posters. It's something about us. So the first thing is about the visible. What's the second thing? Well, the second thing is Jesus didn't say, you are one little house up on the hill by itself. He didn't say that. He said, what did he say? He said, you're like what a town built on a hill. A town. A city, if you will. Together, we are light. Together, if you look at my bottom and put some little pins on a Google map where we all live, together, we are that light. So if you're not feeling very luminous, together we are light. So first thing, visible. Second thing, together. A third thing, how we do? Uh, the battery's dead. Oh, yeah. come up here, come up here, we'll make it work. We will make it work. We will make it work. No, 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 we will, we will resurrect the battery. Just pray for it. Let's have a look, let's have a look. Good work. Good work. The battery's dead. Oh. I know you don't put batteries in very often, but there's one problem with your batteries. Mm -hmm. one way around. Mm -hmm. And one of them's got the other way around. Try, 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 make it work. Make it work. Come on. Broken. Yeah, try that, try that, try that. It spins on. Yeah, press, press the slide now. Ah, oh, what's <laughs> church windows half the time, is that um, is stained glass. Oh yes, here's a nice bit of stained glass. I'm not quite sure. Guess the Bible story. Um, anyway, uh, churches are full of Bible stories uh, in, in stained glass. And often they look good from the outside, uh, from, from the inside. And that's lovely that people come in and, and learn something of God. But I wonder, how would it be if the next picture if we could be a church where the beauty of Jesus is seen outside. And I wonder if actually when the light is in here, if what's seen outside, well it's strange because Jesus doesn't say stand back, I'm the light of the world, get out of the way. He says you are the light of the world. You need to be visible. We all need to be visible. We need to be together. But we need to reveal him. So when 
The light is on inside the church. When the light is on, suddenly the colours are seen. And actually, I think those windows haven't got light bulbs in them. They haven't got, they're not wired up the window. They've got this light in the church and the colours are coming out. Oh, I think of us. I wonder if we can be revealing something of Jesus. Three ways we can do that. Number one, we can be people who are forgiven and set free. Because Jesus loves us, because he's forgiven us, that, that changes who we are. We're able to leave behind things which, which would have held us back. So we can reveal Jesus when we're set free from our past. That's the first way of revealing Jesus. Secondly, when we show love and kindness. You know, when God's done so much to me, given me so much, I guess, I want to love other people. I want to give. I want to care for people. And that's just not me. That's us. That's who we are. That's our DNA as a church. <coughs> And the third thing, I think we need we show our love for God. Anyone here like pizza? Yeah. Vicky, what's your favourite pizza? From where? Um, um, right. And what flavour? Absolutely, I'm sure they'll do that. Yeah. Okay. How would it be if Nikki the great pizza lover? <laughs> Just told people about how much she loved pizza but never ate pizza. That would be a great trick. We'd never believe you eat fully trickers. You just dream of it. Right? I mean, it doesn't make sense. If you love pizza, you probably want to go and eat it. Maybe occasionally, because it's so lovely. How would it be if you love someone, your, your partner or friend, but you never spend time with them? You never kissed them? And for us, I guess, I hope that in here there's something of our love for God, but we actually want to encounter, we come here to encounter God, to encounter his Holy Spirit in worship. And that's part of our witness, for we realise that together encountering God is part of it, that we are set free, that we show love and kindness, and we love God. And I guess that is what it means to reveal, to let the light shine through us, to reveal God and be the light of the world. Who is the light of the world? We yeah. are. Thank you so much, Mark. And um, we're going to have a little bit of time where we uh, can respond to what we've heard. Um, and we're going to do that in a couple of ways. So we, we're going to have, um, in a few minutes, we're going to have a little time of some worship uh, where we can draw near to God in that way. Um, we also, when we come to our prayers, we're going to light some candles as a reminder that we are the light of the world. We are that bright light. And some of you, as you came in, decorated a candle holder but there's also an opportunity now, just before we go into some worship, to go and grab um, some pens and a tea light holder and just decorate it. You might just want to write 2023 on it, put it somewhere where you can have a candle this year. Perhaps <laughs> use it when you pray or light it when you're clearing up your kitchen. And just as that reminder to be a bright light um, this year. So, um, so go, go and grab one. If you want to decorate it, you can. If you want to leave it plain or you feel that you're not very artistic, not that it's a competition, then you can just grab one. And then when we come to the prayer time later, we're going to light all of our candles um, around the room. So just uh, take a moment to move. If you've already done your tea light holder, just make sure you've got it. It's got a tea light in it. Um, and just chat to people for a couple of moments. Uh, while we do that and of course you can carry on colouring while we're singing as well if that's what you like to do so um, I hope that's clear it's felt quite confusing but I hope it's clear enough go and grab a tea light holder grab a pen or a couple of pens do a bit of decorating and uh, when we start to um, sing then join in does that make sense <laughs> Thank you. 
you stand? I mean, you need to make a little bit of a circle around the room with our candles if you like them. And Sally's going to lead us in our prayers as we do that. Okay. Turn the main lights off in a moment, maybe when we're all ready, that would be. So, um, to help us with our prayers, um, there will be some words up on the screen as a response. Lord, in this dark world, let your light shine. So, when I say, Lord, in this dark world, would you please reply with, let your light shine. Should we practice that? Lord, in this dark world, let your light shine. Okay, so... Everybody is holding a tea light. We're facing inwards. So we're going to think first of all about ourselves and the church, the Lantern Church here. And we've heard it said many times this morning from Mark's talk about in Matthew 5 verse 14, Matthew says, you are the light of the world. So as we hold it, how hold the light in our hands, let us think of ourselves as being vessels, carrying God's light with us in everything we do. And I, I'm going to steal that, that, that um, phrase that Mark used. Let us think about ourselves as being luminous, the light shining out from us. <clears throat> so we pray for ourselves here at the Lantern. At the start of a new year, please give us renewed strength and renewed energy to face the challenges ahead of us. We pray for those who are maybe recovering from sickness in the Christmas holidays. We pray that they will soon be back to health. Let us be mindful of each other's needs and support each other. We pray for members of our congregation who are struggling with ill health in body or in mind, and we pray for your healing touch. Maybe we could name some of them out loud now as they come to mind. Lord, in this dark world, we pray for the small groups which are mostly starting up this week. We thank you for the fellowship and for the friendships there. We pray for relationships to be strengthened and friendships to grow amongst ourselves. And we pray that we will be able to support each other and we will be mindful of each other's needs. Lord, in this dark world, we pray too for the advert for the children and families worker which has gone out this week. We pray that the advert will be shared in the right places and will be viewed by many and that the right person will come forward to carry out this vital work. We pray too for some new initiatives for the new community corner which will be happening in February, for all those involved, for the enthusiasm so far and for the planning and the publicity that will happen in the next couple of weeks. Lord, in this dark world, let your light shine. 
So now please can we turn and face outwards. So as we face outwards, we think of ourselves again being vessels carrying the light out into our community of Marlow Bottom and the areas where we live and we work. So please name out loud all those places, all those groups, whether it be work or school, where you might be this week and where you will meet other people. Toddlers, mothers and toddlers. W-Y. Tai Chi. Perfect school. Walking up and down the road. We thank you for all these places, Lord, that we have named. And as we meet and as we socialise this week, may we carry your light to our community, bringing your love to those we meet. Help us to be luminous and to not hide our light, but to let it shine out. Lord, in this dark world, now we will bring our prayers together with the Lord's Prayer, which will be on the screen if you'd like to turn back. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Do please return to your seats. We're almost at the end of our service. We've got one more um, very traditional epiphany hymn to sing. But just before that, there are some notices, as always. Um, 4th of February, we have a quiz night um, being organised by a whole variety of people, but I think taking the lead on Margot and Henry. So, um, where's it going to be? So, it's here on the 4th of February, and I want to say half past seven, but I can't remember exactly. Um, St Anthony's Grand Quiz. I was thinking that maybe we'll do one of the original. Yes. how it goes. But please, if you, if you would like to come, put the team together, get in contact with me. Um, or if you, if you haven't got a team but you still want to come, just get in contact and we'll put you together with, um, uh, with like-minded people. <laughs> <laughs> Not too like-minded. You have to get together with people who know different things from me. <laughs> 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 there will be a chilli supper provided. Tickets are £15. Um, it's either on the way back to the and probably won't have to be able to transfer that. And um, if you would like to help with the food, or behind the bar. Or behind the bar. Or you've got another car behind the bar. I think Duncan's doing the food bar, but he might want to push it. Okay. So if you'd like to help out in any way, do also please let us know and just want to know what numbers are like, then we can sort that out. Yes. How any any limit on team size? Uh, eight. Up to eight. Yeah. So um so we just talked about letting our light shine, and if there are people who you think I could never invite them to a church service, but I could invite them to a quiz then here is your opportunity. Um, next Sunday, really important to remember, because we're thinking about our vision for the year, we're just going to have one combined service at 11 at the chapel. It's also going to include the traditional Methodist covenant service, which is quite often done in a new year. And is a real kind of time of commitment. It's really special. Um, if you've never come to that, then I'd really urge you to come, both because it's an amazing service, but also... Uh, because it is helping us to think about our vision for being a bright light, fertile ground and a healthy body. 
And if you're a bit like me, you think, oh, we do all this vision stuff all the time, but what actually ever comes out of it? I'm just going to highlight a couple of things. So this time last year, when we talked about our vision, one of our things that we wanted to do was employ a part-time children's and families worker. And if you picked up in the prayers, the advert has just gone out for that. The funding has been uh, made available for that. So that's amazing. We said we wanted to do more things in the community. And I think back to our Easter art project, which brought loads and loads of people in uh, to all kinds of things. And also our Christmas services. Um, we talked about renewing our building and just look around. It's so lovely. Thank you. Um, to Mark and the team who did that. We talked about engaging a bit more at Patches Field and that's something unseen perhaps that is going on but Mark's in there kind of week in week out uh, visiting people. We've looked, strengthened our links with Burford School doing assemblies um, and other such things and we um, are trying to serve the poor. Uh, we've had a collection for One Can Trust, we're probably going to be doing that again on our next service Sunday. Um, and if you don't know, but we're currently, I'm currently doing a little fundraising project that involves swimming in very cold water. I was in this morning. Um, and if you want to sponsor me for that, some of the money is going to the church and some of the money is going to Lighthouse, which is an outreach to local children. We've still got a long way to go in terms of our vision, but it is really exciting if you look back over last year that we set some goals and under God we have achieved some of those goals. And that is just um, an amazing thing to be thankful for. So I think that is all in terms of notices and we're going to stand as we're able and sing our final um, hymn which is As With Gladness Men of Old. So do please stand. As Son and Holy Spirit be upon us this day, this year and forevermore.